thank you for joining us this morning. This is a very special event in our faith walk as Christians. And we join together this morning to remember um, the Lord's death and Jesus dying on the cross. The, that whole narrative of his life and how it touches our lives this day. Good Friday is a part of Holy Week, a time to reflect to reset our focus, a vital part of our faith. Good Friday brings us into a significant narrative of our Savior, Jesus Christ, from the birth as a babe in the human form, living in our backyards, our world, to his death on the cross, some 33 years of God's God incarnate. Today, we let the story of the Gospels declare the narrative of those last days. Jesus endured before his death. John Gibbons, Blake Fiddler, Christy Anger will be our readers with special music intertwined. Rick Diltz, piano solo, Blaine Mater, Sherry Mater, and Ashley Veenstra singing with Rick on the piano. Thank you to each of those. We will conclude our time with the Lord's Supper, communion. I will leave that part. So please have a piece of bread, some juice for us to participate together. May God allow us to sense his gentle spirit as he ministers to our hearts to reveal his incredible love and grace and to bring healing to our minds, bodies, and souls. Amen. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. And without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It is worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself with, to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you.
Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand them over to you? So they counted out for him thirty silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which one of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this, this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread, and when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. Since Judas had, char had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was an olive grove, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding the detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell on the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant cutting off his ear. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set them on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him.
As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they had placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers were crucified with him, also heaped insults on him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At the, moment, the cur at the moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him were guard, who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened. They, went, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Then Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away.
thank you to each one of our readers and the special music. It brings us to this very beautiful time that we as Christians celebrate to remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. One more scripture as we enter this time. The Apostle Paul wrote, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That, my friends, is what we are doing at this time. We are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. So I hope that you are prepared to join with me. I have bread. Some will have a loaf of bread that they have, or pita bread, or naan bread. Um, whatever you have is great. And we have the juice, and whatever kind of juice. Symbols are important to us. They are symbols that remind us of this reality. So let us take the bread together. My friends, this bread, um, the story, the narrative of Jesus before he died, he was with his disciples, and he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this represents my body. We give thanks. Father, I thank you for the bread that I hold, that each of my friends this morning hold. And as we hold this bread, we are reminded that this is your body. Yes, it is a symbol, but it is a significant symbol in all of our lives. And I pray that as we share in eating a part of this bread, that you would bless us, encourage us, and remind us of the incredible sacrifice and grace that you extended to each one of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This bread does represent Jesus' body. Take this bread, remembering that he was born to be our Savior, and feed on him in your heart and be thankful. Let us eat together. And after that, Jesus took the juice, the wine. And we drink that wine together, which represents the new covenant in Jesus' blood. Let us pray. Father, I hold in this cup simply Welch's grape juice, but it is a symbol of the reality that you call us to, to remind, remember your death until you return. So, Father, as I hold this cup, I pray that all of my friends that are joining together, this juice would remind us of the blood that was shed on Calvary for the remission of our sins, for the forgiveness, for the cleansing of our hearts. We thank you for that. And as we drink of this cup, we pray that you will bless, encourage, and care for our hearts and bring healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Take this cup, my friends. Remembering that Jesus said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it together and be thankful. My friends, thank you for joining us today. Good Friday without being together is a challenge. I pray that God's healing hand is upon you in your area of need. 
I pray that um, he heals your heart as we wonder what's going on and um, our anxiety and leaning more on Jesus. I, I pray that God will bring uh, a, a sense into our minds that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. And this day through these challenging times, we pray for those families that are being touched by this uh, virus, this pandemic, the many families that are dealing with sadness through death, um, challenges through uh, the reality of being infected and now the challenges of recovery. And some of this is getting closer and closer to our fine city in this area. We know in the Niagara region, and we continue to pray for those frontliners. Um, I pray for the healing of your body, that God will bring healing to you to defeat this pandemic. We stand against it in Jesus' name. And we are just hoping and praying that God will bring uh, an open uh, door where we can see the hope um, of this coming to a conclusion. For your anxiety, for the complications that this pushes you to in the area of jobs and employment, finances, um, being shut in, locked in. Um, I just pray that you would keep your sanity, that you would stay close to Jesus. And um, just remember, as Tony Campolo said years ago, it is Friday, but Sundays are coming. And that represents Easter, but that represents our hope in Christ in all of life. And so it might be dark and it might be upsetting and it might be Friday, but we know Sundays are coming. Hold on, my friends, hold on. Celebrate the goodness of Jesus. God bless you and have an awesome weekend as you hold on to Jesus. Stop.